Woo. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Been a wild ride, hasn't it, for, what, a week? <laughs> so, if you're tired of Wizards of the Coast being full of shenanigans, and you want to take your anger and frustration and put it into a positive note, this video is for you. I'm going to show you some RPGs, table all top RPGs, that are not getting talked about as much as Paizo, Calassium, and... Uh, you know, Cobalt Press. I I love Call of Cthulhu, Starfinder, and I love, you know, all the worlds that Cobalt Press has been building. But we also need to know that there's more indie developers out there, more publishers, more teams that are smaller than Paizo and smaller than Cobalt Press. And you need to check those out as well. And so if you were going to buy a D&D book and now you don't know where to put your money... Keep the tabletop scene going and give it to somebody else who is building the game or building something that you need to check out for sure. So for those who don't know, the first game is inspired by Goonies, the 80s. If you like Stranger Things, this might be up your alley. I know a lot of people who got the starter box for Stranger Things for D&D. And when I saw this game... I signed up for it, Gary Khan, and immediately liked it. Now, this is set in the 80s, so there is a lot of stuff that they throw in there that you can always homebrew and change up. And it's basically, the dice system is what they call a toy box. Dandelion Games made this. It's a one-team person who makes, with a little bit of artists here and there, and some playtesters. And so, you might see Lewis running around. I recommend this system because it's a different take on things. You're not just some big, you know, hero who is going on a world and just destroying dragons. You are a kid. You could be middle school, high school, and you have to figure out how to get through whatever scenario. The first scenario that was made was called Haunted House. Enjoy that one. It's basically a triple dog dare system where you dare each other to go into a haunted house and see if you can make it out alive. You are a kid and you'd only have what's in your backpack. <laughs> and so you have to work, like, work out through that. You also have um, Mayhem Museum. And there was another uh, module that never got made. Uh, just not enough word, you know, traction. And I feel like this game needs to be thrown out there. Please check it out. Please. It's, it's PDFs only $10 and the books are about 20 bucks. There, there is also the main core rulebook. PDF is $10. The book, a little bit more pricey. It's about $30, $40, $50, depending on which one you get. But there's map packs and different things to use. And I have been enjoying this system. I've been playing with a few buddies. And we always laugh at all the shenanigans that happens. There is different things that I want to see happen. And I know that they're working on another system. It's over here. And if you are not into Goonies and different things like that, Dandelion Games also has the Time Lost Citadel. This is another game system completely different from that one. So I also recommend checking out this one. It's a different style. It's mutants. If you're into that, you're going to be seeing like an apocalypse happening in front of you. So I recommend that one. Check it out for sure. Dandelion Games is definitely a system... And they are not using D and D. They're using, you know, roll two dice. It's kind of like a Call of Cthulhu, but you use different dice each time you roll. So learn the curve. Check this one out. And because we were talking about Goonies and Stranger Things style, I wanted to move on to the next one, which is Hunters Entertainment. They made several different games: Kids on Bikes, Kids on Brooms. Great game. There's another game that not many people talk about, and it's called Alice is Missing. This is made by Spencer, and it's basically a silent tabletop RPG. The reason why it's silent is because it's all text-based. You can go in and use Roll20, or you can use the physical version, but either way, you start off the world by talking about your characters, what you want in the world, and what you think about the five people that could be potentially the reason why Alice is Missing, it does touch on a, some topics that you can use lines and veils and you can make sure on, you know, safety measures and different things like that. But 
characters can die so i just give you a heads up so i recommend trying this out and if you're not into that there is also kids on bikes another great system and i recommend this one as well it's just like you know dare luck club where you are a bunch of kids and some stuff happens machines different things i was never thought about this and then i saw this i believe at game hole con and gen con and i signed up for a couple of games and i really truly enjoyed it so hunters entertainment is another great indie rpg people that make some good games i recommend them trying them out seeing any of the games it gets a little bit used to when you know that you can't fight like you used to you only have what's in your backpack you only have your bikes you only have different things but it's a a lot of times mysteries, and I like mysteries, so I recommend this one. And we're going to slide on over to Solarian. And you're going, Solarian, where have I heard that name before? And that was because of the fact that in the scene, there was a time when they were TSR. They made a game called Top Secret. Let me show you that really quick. Top Secret, right here. They had a box set, and... Sadly, they lost the trademark to BTSR, and so they switched their name to Solarian, and now they're still making top secret games. I recommend this. This is if you're into like 007, spy mystery, stuff like that. I played a game with them on a live stream if you want to check that out. Basically, it is, I'll drop a link in the description. It is basically anything you want it to be. We did a Die Hard series where we were characters from the movie Die Hard. It's a classic movie. I recommend anybody who hasn't seen it. And I had a blast playing it. You are also in the 80s and you're trying to get through. See how games I like to play. And it, different systems, go, go check it out. They have different games. They have a couple modules. This one has a module in it. And they also still have some other limited edition. So if you want to try that out. If you're not into that, there is some other games that are coming out. Uh, Kiss My Grits is another one that's coming out. Definitely recommend that one. Um, it looks like a fun party game. They also have Weird Horror. It's another game that was published by them. And there is also some like little... They, they kind of like back in the day, like uh, Dungeon Magazine, kind of like they had little small games in there. This is kind of like that, um, where you can pick up different games by different you know, authors. So I recommend anybody, check out Slarian, check out their games. Kiss My Grits is coming out soon. If you want to try that out, it's a party game. I recommend definitely checking that one for sure. I like party games. I like having fun. I like to go to conventions and just hearing people yell and have a blast. And that sounds like right up my alley. So once they drop it, I'm going to check it out. And they made an announcement that they're going to make their own system. So we'll see what games they drop for that. And we'll go from there. But next one is jp jp made flick and another game called goons and ghosts flick dragon town silver pin that character is just right out my alley it's basically you're in a world of cats dogs different things like that and what i've always loved about his patreon is every month you get something either from Dragon Town or from Goons and Ghosts. Dragon Town is more like D&D &D, D &D, and you will be playing around and then there's magical apples. It's more family friendly. It's more dialed back and the the world that is built is amazing. Every see there's dungeons, different things like that. And every month you'll get something new, either an adventure or some guide like they used to do for D and D second edition, where you get like a guide to the monsters, the fiends, or whatever, and so you get a guide to the shops, the guide to dungeons, how to build dungeons. And the one thing I like is not only do you get books, sometimes you'll get maps, sometimes you'll get little mini figures that you can use for your table, sometimes you'll get pins, different things. It just depends on what he's making for that month. And there's a lot of great adventures. If you had just dropped in and you're like, oh, I want to, I'm missing it out. The books are still available. You can buy the, the main core rule book for each story, whatever you want. If you're into Goosebumps, 
you're into, you know, Ghostbusters, different things like that. That's so it's a lot of like funny, sh silly shenanigans that is right up your alley. If you're into D and D more, Dragon Town, try that one out. And the books are still available. And every month he will announce what's going to be available, what's going to happen, and you're going to get a little sneak peek. And sometimes there's live streams. You'll get to see the characters being created, the world being created right in front of you on a live stream. So JP will be on the channel just going, hey, look, guys, come check it out. We're going to be doing this today. So check out the shop. Check out the Patreon. And if you're into stuff like this, I recommend it. So there are four publishers slash indie developers who I recommend. Please. If I missed anybody who you feel like is a small team, team of like 10, 20, not very big, drop it in the comments. Help out others to find new places and new games to try out. We got to keep this community going. We got to find new things to play. And that's what I did after third edition. My, my pocket, my wallet couldn't handle every new book for 3.5. And I just didn't like the system that they made for fourth edition. So I moved on to Call of Cthulhu, to Starfinder. And I also moved on to several games that were tabletop RPGs and board games. So check it out. Try new things. It's not scary. It's going to be right up your alley. And if you like the video, please give it a like. If you're new, check out another couple videos. I'm into video games and tabletop RPGs. You will see at least once a week, a stream or a video. So I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games.